Alright people, welcome back. More card review. So today, we are looking at Ties of the Brethren. So this is actually a card that I wanted to use on the live stream, the I'm in Y live stream uh, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Shameless plug, if you guys can join, that'd be great. Anyway, uh, I pretty much stayed on the stream that I would be revealing this card because I wanted to use it in a Ubel deck, and you will see why. So, Ties of the Brethren. It is a normal spell card that reads, pay 2,000 life points, then target one level 4 or lower monster you control, special summon from your deck, two monsters with the same type, attribute, and level as that monster, but with different names from each and from each other and that monster. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn. You cannot target battle phase, they're trying to activate this card. Alright, so... Pretty much, you pay 2,000 life points, and you go plus one by summoning two monsters from your deck. Now, of course, a card that's kind of similar to that, which is currently at two in the TCG and at one in the OCG, Summoner Monk, who's pretty much like, hey, you know, put your spell, summon, or even better, Tour Guide, who's limited, who summons another uh, level three fiend-type monster. You know, summoning from the deck is probably one of the most powerful mechanics you can get, you know. When it comes to uh, summoning from the deck, if your deck can do that, then that makes your deck extra good and of course if uh the deck it, the card the card is too generic when it comes to something from the deck and it possibly maybe get hit just because you know taking resources from the deck that's just straight up plus if your card just straight up says summon something from the deck that's a plus because you, you count your resources from hand and field and you're not losing anything you're literally gaining something from a non-countable resource your deck to the field I'm not even summoning from a hand to field, because that's literally even out. That's the same resource, hand to field. But deck to field, you know, even deck to hand, that's also a plus. You know, if you can get cards from your deck to your hand or field, that's a plus. And this card pretty much does that. You play one of these to summon two monsters from your deck, and that's a plus one. But, of course, there is some restrictions on this card. So it's a plus one, but at what cost? So, of course, you cannot special summon, you know monsters for the rest of the turn. That's to pretty much make sure that you're not just going, all right, well, I have this level four and pay 2,000 life points, summon two level fours. Oh, look, I got three level fours. Let me just XC those two into Patola Mouse, Detach, and Nova, and Infinity. I'm like, no, 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 no. So, uh, that's one of the restrictions. And of course, you cannot conduct your battle phase turn after this card, just in case you're just gonna be like, all right, summon a level four, play this, summon two more level fours, and attack, 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 game. So, uh, Konami made some restrictions, but, I mean, like I said, it's still a plus one. You're summoning, you know, monsters from your deck, which is good. So, I've seen this card being used in a couple of decks. Uh, one of the decks that I've seen being used in is Bujins, where pretty much, uh, Bujins, you go ahead and summon a monster, a beast warrior, light attribute, level four, uh, doesn't matter, and you pretty much get to summon Yamato and another, you know, beast warrior, light, Bujin monster. So that's pretty much what I've been seeing, the kind of revival of Bujins, because even with three Yamatos and, of course, three Tenkis, uh, it's still kind of consistent when you rely on Yamato so much in Bujins. Hey, you know, I, I'll gladly go ahead and pay 2,000 life points to get, you know, Yamato on the field and get the ball rolling when it comes to Bujins. Another deck I've been seeing the kind of revival with, uh, especially on uh, uh, Lithium's channel, is Counter Fairies, where... You know, not only do you have that new pendulum uh, counter fairy, but then you have the one where you draw the card, and you have another one I can't remember, but pretty much, you know, the deck's pretty slow. You're playing a lot of just normal summoning and, uh, you know, counter traps, so when I go ahead and play this card and be able to summon the other counter trap fairies as well. So, I've been seeing that. And then my idea, and the idea that I wanted to try out on uh, the Lime Y live stream, but the deck wasn't on the end yet, is pretty much helping the consistency of Supervisor Bell. Uh, as you guys may know, or you should know, uh, Roto went down, back down to one on the, this past ban list, and that hurt my Yubel deck, of course, because one of my main senders is Armageddon Knight and Dark Raffer, who are both warriors, so, of course, as soon as Roto went up to three, I would play Triple Roto to make sure I get those Armageddon Knights and those Dark Raffers to set up my graveyard for my Doom Shaman Yubel Tinker plays. But with Rhoda now at one, I mean, that hurt my consistency. With a level chain ban, that also hurt my consistency. And I was kind of worried about, you know, how am I going to do consistent plays. Then I saw this, and I was like, you know what? I might be able to do something with this. Because, of course, Dark Greffer and Armageddon Knight are the same type and attribute and level. So, essentially, the way that it work is I just throw in another uh, Warrior Dark level four and i could just be like all right well i got ties of brother in and i only got armageddon knight and i got you in my hand well the 
monsters effects aren't negated i can still use all their effects so i could just pretty much be like all right armageddon knight send doom shaman activate ties and some uh pay 2000 summon dark gruff or summon my other uh level four dark attribute uh monster dark gruff effect pitch the bell send the tinker and pretty much i have all three, I have my graveyard nice and set up with the combination and summoning a Dark Grepper and Armageddon Knight and whatever the other level 4 Dark Warrior uh, I would be playing would be to hopefully help uh, on the stream. We we're actually tr planning to try out uh, Diamond Dude. You know, Diamond Dude, there's a nice handful of spell cards uh, that are played in sewer rights such as silent doom and swing of memories and all that so not a chunk of normal spells that can be used so why not just go ahead and have you know diamond dude i mean really there's not a lot of dark level four warrior type monsters that can help or let alone be good but you know we wanted to go ahead and try diamond dude so pretty much if i get ties of the brethren with either dark Grefford, armageddon knight or diamond dude i can summon the other two they're paying 2000 light points they don't have to be in attack mode they can be in defense mode and you know sure i can't conduct my battle pit, battle phase or special summon anyway but generally this play would probably be do done during my first turn where i can't conduct my battle phase anyway and while it sucks that i can't you know exceed with them it's totally fine because i just got my graveyard set up as quickly as possible which is something that you definitely want to do in Super Icy Bell. So I wanted to go ahead and try it out, you know, just go ahead and play the Armageddon Knights, Dark Graphics of course, uh, and then whenever, you know, Dark Level 4 player that could be thrown in, go ahead and play some of this, summon a monk to go ahead and also summon out the deck and just try to keep the deck as consistent as possible. So overall, I think that this card's actually pretty good. Like I said, it's a plus one at what cost. I will gladly pay the 2,000 like points. If I can't spot a summon for the rest of the turn, that's fair. And if I can't conduct my battle phase, that's fair. Because I am summoning two monsters for my deck. And that in itself is just totally worth the risk versus the reward. So um, tell me what you guys think about Tides of Oh, yeah, one more deck that I've seen this in is Magic Spectres, where they would pretty much have um, uh, Crow... Uh, fox and then turtle who's not out i mean turtle hello there's no turtle frog who's not out in the tcg yet and pretty much you would summon one and then summon the other one it's just uh you know you can't special summon monster for the rest of the turn so even if you have your silt spell you can't switch out you can't pendulum summon you know it's just for the rest of the turn you cannot special summon monsters like that so uh i'm not the biggest fan of the magic specters i mean like i said they seem like a pretty consistent deck with everybody being able to search so uh i i personally wouldn't play this magic specters and when i saw it on lithium's channel he was he you know he was like yeah this isn't the goodness either so i played it personally when played in magic specters but just 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 another example of um a deck that i've seen this being played in so yeah tell me what you guys think about this card and tell me what deck you would play this in if you would play it remember it has to be the same type, attribute, and level, but different names. It has to be different names. So you can't just be like, all right, well, I'm going to summon Armageddon Knight and then play this and summon two more Armageddon Knights. Well, that would be mwah, beautiful. You can't do that. So like I said, it has to be same type, attribute, level, with different names from the monster that you're summoning and the monster that you uh, control currently. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and tell me what you guys would do with this card. Uh, hopefully it gets on DM soon and we could possibly try it on Supervice and see if it helps. Uh, of course, during the live stream, we made Supervice bad trigger. I mean, I really can't say with full authority that, you know, Supervice is back. I mean, still, I just think I got, got kind of lucky with the sending and the consistency of the sending. And at times it wasn't. But um, if you guys have any suggestions for Super Vicey Bell, uh, be sure to go ahead and come on the live stream Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, like I said, we're playing U Bell decks on the end uh, versus viewers and subscribers are just randoms. And we're pretty much just, you know, experiencing Vitamin Y, which used to be an everyday series Monday through Friday, just, you know, squished all together and a live stream on Saturdays uh, with all of you guys. So if you guys can make it, that'd be great. Shameless plug. <laughs> So I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Like I said, uh, so far my return has been weak and things have been fine, you know. Uh, not a lot of stress is building up off of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and doing card reviews and doing commentary. And so far, we combined with real life, work, school, uh, I'm doing fine. So don't have to worry about me taking a break anytime soon because they're going to keep this train rolling. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you guys Wednesday with another card to look at. We have plenty of more cards to look at. Ton of cards came during my break. Ton of cards came after my break. We got a lot to look at. All right, people. Thanks for watching.